Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now the middle of January of 2022 and as we get closer to the release of the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV series and even the Mandalorian season three that's going to debut later this year, a lot of Star Wars fans have had mixed reactions on the book of Boba Fett, especially with chapter three, the streets of Moss Espa. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, I am on Twitter at Mike Zero One. If you guys want to go ahead and give me a follow on there, I do make sure to post a couple of entertaining things from time to time and really make sure to interact with you guys further. So what's really intriguing has everything to do with what's been going on behind the scenes for, of course, multiple TV shows out there like The Mandalorian Season 3, Star Wars Andor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and more to come on Disney+. Plus. We already know that Bob Chapek is really allowing George, John, and Dave to really give it their all when it comes to introducing a lot of Star Wars legends in the mix and combining it with the beloved, you know, Disney Star Wars aspects that... Really, a lot of fans have been enjoying with the books, the novels, and the comics, and how they can transfer that over into the form of live action. So that's another thing that they're really trying to do very carefully and respectfully as well, by mixing it together with legends and exactly how they can create that balance. So one thing that a lot of fans have had issues over was, of course, the Book of Boba Fett Chapter 3, which, by the way, I would love to hear your opinion on Chapter 3 below in the comments, since I have noticed that it is a mixed bag. You know, there are elements in that episode that a lot of people did not enjoy. Example, the biker chase is a great example of one thing that a lot of fans didn't necessarily enjoy to the maximum because of how it was executed, but... Moving on beyond all of this, all right, what's really intriguing has everything to do with what Lucasfilm has planned for Star Wars Legends making a big comeback in, of course, the new Star Wars universe and how it's going to debut in, of course, both this year and in 2023. So with the Ahsoka Tano series getting ready to begin filming by this spring, both Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are prepared to announce new Star Wars shows and projects at Celebration this year to excite the fans around the globe. However, one major thing that Lucasfilm is currently putting together that will truly impress the hardcore fans has to do with what Legends material is making its way into the Star Wars universe. Now further, it's noted that for The Mandalorian Season 4, which is already in early development, both John and Dave are prepared to bring in beloved character Mara Jade to have multiple special scenes with Luke Skywalker in 2023. These scenes are set to involve a fight sequence between both Mara Jade and Luke before they become allies and later the new couple of the Star Wars franchise. Now further, the fight scene between both Luke and Mara Jade is described to be inspired from unused material for Star Wars Legends that was not approved by George Lucas back in the day that will now be implemented into The Mandalorian Season 4 that is set to conclude the entire series. Now, in case you guys did not know, they will be using a lot of unused aspects of Star Wars Legends for the new Star Wars movies, TV shows, etc. Whether it be live action or animated, they will be using a lot of unused concepts and ideas for legends back in the 1990s and the early 2000s and exactly how they're going to be able to throw that into the current canon so a great example is that there's a lot of untold stories of luke that we never even got to see in the expanded universe from many years ago and they're going to be using a lot of that scrapped material to mix it in with the already existing legends content to really make it feel fresh and new that to me is a very interesting strategy and path to actually move forward with really implementing a lot of these untold stories and also implementing it with and fusing it with the already known Star Wars Legends material. So given that John and Dave, they really are taking their time to really make sure that they're going to respect the fans and that they're going to really make sure to really do things correctly. That's one thing I got to give a lot of credit to John and Dave for, and I believe that we all have to, is that they really do take their time on things. They take a lot of time on balancing things out, you know, what's to be used too much or too little, what comes in between all of that. They did the same exact thing with The Mandalorian Season 2 
where they made sure that they balanced everything with Luke. How much was too much, how much was too little. And you know what? They did the perfect amount in my book for an introduction of Luke coming back into the equation of the Star Wars universe. They did it perfectly. They gave us the setup, they gave us the action, and they gave us the resolution of exactly who he really was at the very end of the episode and grabbing Grogu and creating that beautiful, you know, climax, you know, giving us that overall cliffhanger, if you will, of exactly where Luke and Grogu are really going. So moving beyond this, all right, so in addition to all of this, Grand Admiral Thrawn is said to be the one who sends Mara Jade to hunt down and destroy Luke Skywalker. This entire scene is already storyboarded and will be finalized in the script over the summer of this year. Now, another sequence that is fully planned out for the fourth season is described to involve a full-on training session between both Luke Skywalker and Kyle Katarn in the show that will showcase more of Luke Skywalker's new generation of Jedi later on in the series. Now, given that Lucasfilm is planned to make Mando Season 4 a 12-episode season, with longer episodes each to really cram in tons of new story elements, Luke Skywalker is described to be used extensively in the fourth season compared to the third. Now, more of Luke Skywalker's new generation of Jedi from Star Wars Legends will also be inserted into the final season that will really surprise the fandom. The last season is also set to have a significant time jump to explain Grogu's progression as a Jedi Padawan under Luke Skywalker's teachings. However, Favreau and Filoni are going to make sure to continue that connection between both Din and Grogu in Mandalorian as a whole, even with Season 3, is unexpected in ways for the entire fandom to embrace. With characters like Kyle Katarn getting the limelight in the final season, these characters are planned to be, of course, used further in the planned Young Luke TV series, dubbed simply as Star Wars Jedi Knight. This will continue the story of the lives closest to Luke Skywalker like Mara, Kyle, and even Leia, and such as others like Grogu in the mix, that will be used in a special and magical way by George, John, and Dave. Now, John Favreau is also prepared to announce the fourth season of Mando at Celebration and recently told fans that the Force is going to be very strong with both Season 3 and future Mandalorian installments. So, once again, I think that Lucasfilm is on their mark when it comes to providing the TV shows that are associated with the Force, the Jedi, and the Cosmic Force and such. I believe that's one major reason as to why a lot of fans are looking forward to shows like the Ahsoka Tano series, the Kenobi TV show, and even The Mandalorian Season 3 because it's combining things with the Force and Bounty Hunters in one. That's what I love so much about the ending of Season 2 and how it opens up the gateway for both Season 3 and Season 4, which is labeled currently as the final season unless, you know, the course changes. So one thing that I think Favreau knows what he's doing is the combination of Disney canon, Star Wars Legends, and unused Star Wars Legends material from the 1990s and the early 2000s, and exactly how that's all going to be balanced out. I think he knows exactly what he's doing with Dave Filoni and George Lucas by his side, and how they're really going to be able to progress with these characters like Luke, Mara, Kyle, Thrawn and Ezra Bridger and more, and how that's all going to be used as an ensemble cast in a sense. So overall, guys, you know, let me know what you think about all this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>